Hello, you're welcome to the lecture Cocaine Cafe. During the lecture, you will observe definition and basic concepts of the cocaine and cocaine abuse, as well as the general concepts of treatment of abuse. Cocaine is a powerfully addictive stimulant, mostly used as a recreational drug. It is commonly snorted, inhalated, or smoked, or dissolved and injected into a vein. Cocaine is made from the leaves of the coca plant that you can see on the slide. This plant is native to South America. Besides cocaine, the coca leaf contains a number of other alkaloids. Cocaine increases levels of the natural chemical messenger dopamine in brain circuits related to the control of movement and reward. Normally, dopamine recycles back into the cell that release it, shutting off the signal between nerve cells. However, cocaine prevents dopamine from being recycled, causing large amounts to build up in the space between two nerve cells, stopping their normal communication. This flood of dopamine in the brain's reward circuit slowly reinforces drug-taking behaviors because the reward circuit eventually adapts to the express of dopamine caused by cocaine and becomes less sensitive to it. As a result, people take stronger and more frequent doses in an attempt to feel the same high and to obtain relief from withdrawal. Healthcare providers can use cocaine for valid medical purposes, such as local anesthesia for some surgeries. However, recreational cocaine use is illegal. Some people find that cocaine helps them perform simple physical and mental tasks more quickly. Also, others experience the opposite effect. Large amount of cocaine can lead to bizarre unpredictable and violent behavior. As with other drugs, repeated use of cocaine can cause long-term changes in the brain's reward circuit and other brain systems, which may lead to addiction. On this slide, you can see the negative effects of cocaine abuse. A cocaine overdose occurs when a person uses enough of a drug to produce serious adverse effects, life-threatening symptoms, or death. An overdose can be intentional or unintentional. Death from overdose can occur on the first use of cocaine or unexpectedly thereafter. Many people who use cocaine also drink alcohol at the same time, which is particularly risky and can lead to overdose. Others mix cocaine with heroin, another dangerous and deadly combination. Some of the most frequent and severe health consequences of overdose are irregular heart rhythm, heart attack, seizures, and strokes. Other symptoms of cocaine overdose include difficulty breathing, hallucinations of delirium, sweating, increased heart rate, anxiety and panic, etc. Cocaine withdrawal symptoms include depression, fatigue, increased appetite, unpleasant dreams and insomnia, slower thinking and can last for 7-10 days. Behavioral therapy such as cognitive behavioral therapy, therapeutic communities, etc. may be used to treat cocaine addiction. Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant of the methylxanthine plant. It is the world's most widely consumed psychoactive drug. Unlike many other psychoactive substances, it is legal and unregulated in nearly all parts of the world. Caffeine is a bitter, white crystalline purin and is chemically related to the adenine and guanine bases of DNA and RNA. It is found in the seeds, nuts, or leaves of a number of plants native to Africa, East Asia, and South America. The most well-known source of caffeine is the coffee bean, 
the seat of the coffee plant. Caffeine is classified by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration as generally recognized as safe. Toxic doses over 10 grams per day for an adult are much higher than the typical dose of under 500 milligrams per day. A cup of coffee contains from 80 to 175 milligrams of caffeine, depending on what bean seed is used how it is roasted, darker roast, for less caffeine, and how it is prepared, for example, drip, percolation, or espresso. Sus is required, requires roughly 50 100 ordinary cups of caffeine to reach the toxic dose. However, pure powdered caffeine, which is available as a dietary supplement, can be lethal in tablespoon-sized amounts. In the absence of caffeine and when a person is awake and alert, little adenosine is present in central nervous system neurons. With a continued wakeful stage, over time, adenosine accumulates in the neuronal synapse, in turn binding to an activating adenosine receptors found in certain central nervous system neurons. When activated, these receptors produce a cellular response, response that ultimately increases drowsiness. When caffeine is consumed, it antagonizes adenosine receptors. In other words, caffeine prevents adenosine from activating the receptor by blocking the location on the receptor where adenosine binds to it. As a result, caffeine temporarily prevents or relieves drowsiness and thus maintains or restores alertness. Caffeine is used in bronchopulmonary dysplasia in premature infants for both prevention and treatment. Apnoe of pneumaturity as a primary treatment, or to start a hypertension treatment. Caffeine citrate is on the World Health Organization model list of essential medicines. Consumption of 1 to 1.5 grams per day is associated with a condition known as caffeinism. Caffeinism usually combines caffeine dependency with the wide range of unpleasant symptoms, including nervousness, irritability, anxiety, insomnia, headaches, increased vasoconstriction and blood pressure after caffeine use. Caffeine overdose can result in a state of central nervous system overstimulation known as caffeine intoxication, a clinically significant temporary condition that develops during or shortly after the consumption of caffeine. According to the International Classification of Disease, cases of very high caffeine intake, more than 5 grams, may result in caffeine intoxication with symptoms including mania, depression, disorientation, disinhibition, delusions, hallucinosis, or psychosis. Death from caffeine ingestion appears to be rare and most commonly caused by an intentional overdose of medication. Addiction is a complex but treatable disease that affects brain function and behavior. Drugs of abuse alter the brain structure and function, resulting in changes that persist long after a drug was tested. That may explain why drug abusers are at risk for relapse even after long periods of abstinence and despite the potentially devastating consequences. Effective treatment attends to multiple needs of the individual, not just his or her drug abuse. Medically assisted detoxification is only the first stage of addiction treatment and by itself does little to change long-term drug abuse. Behavioral therapies include an individual, family, or group counseling are the most commonly used forms of drug abuse treatment. Thank you for your attention.